For the past couple months, I've been playing around in Blender and I decided to see if I can convert a normal logo into a neon sign using Blender. So here's how I did mine. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is whenever you get your logo file, which is, let's just say it's this picture right here, right? So you want to turn it into a SVG file. So I'm using Adobe Illustrator. So you open it up in Adobe Illustrator. Select the image, go to Object, go to Image Trace, make and expand. And now you want to save it as a SVG file. And well, I already did that. So let's just do that and then just press OK. And then you want to open up Blender. It's a free software. Um, it is very good for, it's mainly for animating, but this works. Press A to select everything and then press X to delete. You want to go to File, Import, SVG, and then you want to import that SVG file that you just created. All right, so it's right here. Nice. So this outer plate, this part right here, we do not need that. So we're just going to delete that. And then this part right here, we don't need that either. So delete that. So you want it to look kind of like that, right? So the first thing I did was start converting these curves into meshes. To do that, all you have to do is press F3 and type in convert, then choose convert mesh. Do this for all the objects. Next, go into edit mode, press A to select all. Then go to select, select loops, select boundary loop. Then duplicate it by pressing Shift D and then right click. Then press P and select selection. Do the exact same thing for all the objects. Next, delete the part that's filled in. Just press it to select it and then press X to delete. You should end up with something like this. The next thing we are going to do is go to the modifiers tab and add the skin modifier. At first it's going to look pretty weird. So make sure to press tab and go into edit mode. Press A to select everything and then Control A to scale down the size of the skin modifier. This can basically be as thin as you want it to be because that's going to be the inner light part. Go ahead and add the subdivision surface modifier. This will really give it that curvature that you really need. Make sure to shade the object smooth by selecting the object then right clicking and hit shade smooth. Now it's time to apply the gradient look. Go into the shader editor, check this box that says use nodes. And we're going to edit the material that's applied to the SVG by default. Before we go any further, make sure to join all the objects in one by selecting one object and press and hold shift and select all the other objects and right click and press join. Now it's time to do the textures. Add a color ramp node, but before that add a gradient texture. Connect that to the color ramp, then connect the color ramp to base color. Go into render mode in your 3D viewport so that you're able to see what's going on. As you can see, we have a black to white gradient, which matches what we have in the color ramp. But the real power comes in when you add a mapping and texture coordinate node, so that we can really have a lot of control over this. Next, go ahead and edit your color ramp to whatever color you want. I like the light blue to light purple, but the problem is it's not producing any light because we're using a principal BSDF add in mission node so we can have light that we can control. Next, connect the color from color ramp to color in emission and then emission to material output. Then delete the principal BSDF. You can play around with the strength of the light. I think about four is good. Next, add a plane by pressing Shift A, press Mesh, and then press Plane. Next, go to the material properties and add a material for the plane. Next, you need a few photos for the background. I'm using some circuit board photos I found on Google. Drag and drop them into the shade editor, get the main photo and connect it to the base color. Get the second photo and connect it to the metallic, and get the third photo and connect it to the roughness. Then go into rendered view and position the image as you please. Also, if you need, use a shortcut S for scaling. You want to make sure the background is a little under the SVG image. Just select it, press G, then press Z to move it on the Z axis. Next, go to the render properties and set the engine to cyclist to increase the suffering of your PC. Next, select the SVG logo and press Shift D to make a duplicate, then right click. Then go into edit mode, then press A, then press Ctrl A, then size it up to however big you want it. Next, go and add in the new material, then go and delete the BSDF node and add a glass BSDF. Next thing you want to make sure is that the roughness is all the way down and that's pretty much it. The only thing left to do is to set up some cool camera angles and hit render. You can download this file for yourself if you want for completely free by pressing the link in the description. Feel free to ask any questions and I'll do my best to answer them. Please subscribe if you haven't and have a good day.